Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to your Friday. Eric and Stella with you here. You always know it's uh, getting closer to the start of summer here when we see the county fair. Oh, yeah. Wait right? until you see all the goodness, the food I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, it's a good idea to, to head out there. Um, with an appetite. Yeah. How many <laughs> cinnamon sure. rolls do you think Chris grows eaten by now? Um, two. Or two. Three? <laughs> two. We're Maybe going two. two. Yeah. I'm going to go with three because uh, there were three <laughs> sitting out there and uh, he was starting to gobble one during his live shot last right. night. <laughs> Netta, I'm getting messages from our viewers who are like, whoa, that looks amazing. Uh -huh. I mean, it was a cinnamon roll with cinnamon toast crunch mm. on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I hope he shared with his photographer, Jay, right? Oh, that's true. I would hope so. Unless they each are devouring three rolls right now. We will have to find out. Stay tuned. Uh, we are going to look at Del Mar uh, throughout the morning because this will be a popular spot. As you know, uh, homegrown fun, uh, the scaled back version of the fair will be happening in Del Mar. Temperatures will feel great there. We have a lot of sunshine already. Mount Soledad it does look a little hazy looking towards downtown. Here's a look at those weather headlines. Our warm up starts today. That ridge of high pressure is going to get closer, but don't worry. We're not talking extreme heat yet. We have a few days before that cranks up. That's really going to start Monday through Friday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will be the hottest days of our heat wave and our fire weather other conditions also are going to be elevated because of that drier heat that will be coming. Jenny. Uh, happy Friday to you. Super quiet travel time wise. A little bit of a buildup. Can you see from here the yellow on the Coronado Bridge and north on the five? It is not bad. Just a little bit of volume starting to build up. All the rest of your freeway times look pretty magnificent, if I do say so. Melrose Drive northbound side at Palmar Airport. This is the one reported crash that is causing a blockage. So just that northbound lane is shut down. Back to you. Hey, if you're confused, you're not alone with the mass confusion still being felt across the state. We could get some more clarification as early as today on when and where the masks will be required. In fact, Eric, my husband went into a place yesterday and yeah. he was told, hey, you don't have to wear your mask. So he messaged me. He was like, oh, we're not wearing masks anymore. So lots of confusion. All right. And some of the big boxes are saying you don't need to do it. But then there's certain rules in the state and then the county and then they keep changing those. So what's happening? Well, Governor Gavin Newsom is going to be in Southern California, which will include a trip here to San Diego to hopefully provide some answers for all of us. News 8's Evan Rani, live at Harbor Island. A lot of people uh, confused. Let's just put it that way. A lot of pressure on me to explain, but you're right. A lot of people confused, and I wish I could give all the answers. But uh, Governor Newsom says that he will clarify today in that press conference what he means by uh, these updated mask guidelines, what the Cal OSHA uh, rescinding uh, the previous guidelines means for the state of California once June 15th comes around. There has been a lot of confusion and a lot of combativeness across the board, especially from business owners and from people who are expected to enter the workplace come June 15th. As to whether or not they're going to need to wear their mask in that workplace once they get back to it. And of course, those uh, clarifications much needed considering uh, the uh, Cal OSHA board yesterday uh, just withdrew their requirements that said that even if one person in the workplace were unvaccinated, then everyone would need to wear their masks. So now we're kind of in that l uh, legal limbo uh, period and phase and uh, a lot of people hoping for some clarity. So you're working as a server. You have your mask on because you're required to. Uh, you're fully vaccinated. You're finished with your shift and you leave. But then you decide, I really like this restaurant. I'm coming back with my friends and family. No mask. And you're still complying with the law in both places. You have to wear a mask when you're at work and you don't in the same place, the same person, uh, when you are there in a different capacity as a patron. That's how weird this whole thing is. And that was Dan Eden. He's an attorney and uh, also talked with us uh, about the implications of uh, these new guidelines. Protests were held outside of Cal OSHA offices yesterday with protesters shouting, quote, we won't comply. It comes after Cal OSHA voted to rescind its previous more strict guidelines for the workplace that were set for June 15th. Governor Newsom called that decision encouraging, but will still be in Southern California today to offer clarity on what many are calling confusing restrictions. It's expected that new guidelines from Newsom and Cal OSHA will say that if you are fully vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask even in the workplace. That's what's expected of those guidelines. But of course, anything can go. It will take until, of course, June 15th for those new regulations to go into place where many people in most settings can remove their masks. However, that next meeting of Cal OSHA is expected next Thursday, and that's when they will likely vote on those updated restrictions. Now, outside of the workplace, more relaxed mask wearing guidelines are going to go into place on June 15th. That's when 
when most people will be able to take off their masks. However, of course, you'll still be required to wear that mask if you're in a, a setting like a, a hospital or public transit, for example, uh, where that mask will still be required, as well as if you are unvaccinated or partially vaccinated, where you'll still need to wear that mask. Back to you. Evan, thank you. Governor Newsom will be in San Diego today for the state's Vax for Win initiative, the lottery giving some $50,000. Yeah, 15 Californians will become $50,000 richer just for being vaccinated. Then on Tuesday, 10 people will win $1.5 million. If you've received at least one COVID-19 vaccine dose anywhere in the state, you will automatically be entered. Also, the first 2 million Californians to start and finish the vaccination process after May 27th will receive a $50 gift card. San Diego County District Attorney's Office is warning about a rise in advertisements on social media offering fake COVID-19 vaccine cards. The DA's office said those making, selling, buying, or using the fake documents could face both federal and state criminal charges as the cards contain official U.S. government seals, which makes it illegal to copy without authorization. Officials are also reminding those who get the shot to not post vaccination cards on social media due to privacy concerns. Well, today, President Biden and other global leaders will be out, uh, will outline their plan to help the world recover from the pandemic as the G7 summit gets underway in England. The seven wealthy nations are donating one billion coronavirus vaccine to the rest of the world. The U.S. is leading the way with 500 million doses of Pfizer, uh, with the president saying uh, no strings attached. We are expecting to learn more about the other leaders' commitments later today when the summit officially begins. The fair at the Del Mar Fairgrounds is going to look a lot different this year, but still promises a lot of fun options. This year it's called Homegrown Fun. Yes, from concession stands to rides, uh, it's making sure you don't have to miss out on the experience of the county fair. Uh, for, uh, you know, many years now, News 8's Chris Grow is live with giving us a preview. Uh, it's uh, toned down a little, but a lot still to do and lots of food. The stomach doesn't feel like it's toned down at all. In fact, it's still kind of reminiscent of what we've been seeing in the past. And of course, we're also seeing our animal shows here as well, too. So we are still going to be getting that. And Carla joining us here with the live animal stage that we will be seeing. And you have a friend here for me. You said I, I should hold him. Who is this, guys? I think you should. This is Tinkerbell, a Mexican orange knee tarantula, one of the many animals that will be in the wild, uh, Lee Homegrown Fun show here at the fair. Wow. Uh, so you just put Tinkerbell in my hand, and I think normally people, maybe even at home, would get really scared of tarantulas. What is probably the most mis what's the biggest misconception about them? People think they're poisonous, but they're, they're not. They're venomous, which mm. means that um, they do have a small amount of venom, but that's only used to eat their food. We're too big, so they're not going to hurt us. If you were a cricket, I'd be terrified. <laughs> well, good thing we're not. So, so now we'll have Jay kind of show off, well, He's Tinkerbell is extremely colorful here, but also a little bit more color here. We have R a macaw, yeah, RC. RC, our scarlet macaw, one of the most colorful. Oh, and look at him feeling all fancy. Get ready for the fair. <laughs> Uh, the, the macaws are beautiful animals, of course not native here to San Diego, but we're going to talk about all aspects of wildlife and get people close. So he is going to be my uh, stage representative hanging out here meeting and greeting. And then we have another beautiful friend and uh, who happens to be really <laughs> checking it out. This is Tumbleweed, our beautiful great horned owl. And uh, he is actually a super farmer helper. He eats all kinds of rodents. And in fact, is a mom and dad owl at this time of year will consume about 100 mice a week for their offspring. So they are really super good at helping keeping population controls. That is exciting. I could see your passion right right off. I mean, it's it's bright, right? Yeah. Um, what is the best thing about coming back to the fair this year for you? Oh, my gosh. Well, this is my hometown fair, so yay. And uh, just meeting the people, showing how uh, featuring San Diego at its best. And we are a fun, homegrown town, so it's perfect that we're all coming back and feeling good. So come see us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much, Tinkerbell. Um, thank you for, for not sharing some of your venom with me. I, I know I'm too big, but let's keep that, you know, over there. Um, you know, but guys, thank you so not, much. Yeah. Homegrown Fair. Yeah. Uh, you guys still can get your tickets. You can go online and do okay. that. And they are opening up today. The doors at 11 a.m. Okay, so if you want to see okay. Tinkerbell, you got to get in line. Okay? Yeah. I, I got to tell you, when I look at a tarantula, I don't think of Tinkerbell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, why, why not?
Why not? I'll tell my daughter we're gonna go, I'm gonna take her to the fair she's and she's like, gonna right. visit Tinkerbell. <laughs> Imagine and you then surprise her, her with that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that thing. That was fun. Oh, and then God. that feather, the uh, parrot showing or the macaw showing off its feathers there. Mm -hmm, the owl. Yeah, everyone's ready for their up close uh, interview here. They're, they're big show offs. Yeah. The birds That's are big true. show offs. That's true. <laughs> it should be. Chris, thank you. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Sure, it looks like a fair out there to me. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's I toned down, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah smaller yeah. capacity and everything, but it looks fun. It does look fun. And that's a huge part of the fair, right? All the animals. And yeah, I like seeing them puff up their feathers. They want you to come see them. They're beautiful. Uh, and Tinkerbell was so furry. <laughs> it's interesting. All right, so Del Mar right now, Dog Beach, as you see. Oh, these guys are having a blast. Low tide just got done about an hour or so ago, so you see plenty of space there. We are looking at high tide happening around 1130 this morning. Uh, our wave heights one to three foot or so kind of small rip current risk stays low which is good news now that we've been in that moderate range all week long water temperature still in the mid 60s so with so many people kind of uh, you know preparing for the heat that's coming likely the beaches will be full so just plan accordingly you'll probably want to get out there early uh, it's 58 degrees right along our coastline right now you see from this camera view how clear it is that sun is out it will warm you up but to start off with with clear skies we do have chilly weather. So 49 in Poway, you're at 45 now in Ramona, 55 in El Cajon, Chula Vista, 54 degrees. Not a huge change from yesterday, just one or two degrees different. But as you see in the deserts, nine degrees cooler. Uh, but this afternoon, the deserts will get significantly warmer. The triple digit heat begins now for our desert communities. Now the west wind is going to keep us from getting too hot through this weekend and then the ridge builds from the east of us and that's when you really start to notice that heat ramp up. So 81 in Escondido, Ramona, 83 in El Cajon. That's very seasonal. These are normal temperatures for the month of June. Uh, 68 in Del Mar. Downtown expects 73 for today. But again, Borrego up to 104 does put you slightly above average.